Hello, today we're looking at one of the coolest cars I have ever seen. Honestly, in some ways, it's more than just a car. Welcome everyone to the all new Hyundai Staria. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of all our future uploads. So start up front. It's a great talking point because I mean, just look at it. It looks completely different from anything else on the road. It looks more like a concept car you'd see in a movie or a sci-fi TV show than it does an actual production vehicle. I mean, just look at this full length LED light strip that goes across the front. It makes the car look very Robocop or kind of spaceshipy. you know what I mean? And then you have this huge bronze grill, with the bronze logo, and then the actual LED headlights on either side. Now, the front of this car is actually super imposing because it's basically just a wall of car behind you, right? So I found that when I drive, people are a lot more likely to give way to me because if they didn't give way, they'd just get run over. Right, so on to the side of the car and we'll start with the rims. Now these are 18 inch rims, but just compared to the rest of the car, they look tiny. They look like they're 13 inch ones. And uh, speaking of really big things, here is the gigantic bronze cap wing mirror. And the door handles are also finished in a kind of bronze look. And the rear doors, these are sliding ones. And they're electrically operated. All I have to do is pull on the handle or the driver can press a little button on the inside and it'll swing open automatically. To close it, I can just press this button here or pull on the handle and it'll close once again. Now, as the door closes, you can see the continuation of this just huge slab of car. This thing's over 5.2 meters long and look, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm still next to the car, I'm still next to the car, only now am I at the back. So to start at the back with this stack of square LEDs that make up the tail lights, I love it, that's all I can say. I love the design and I really applaud Hyundai for doing something different. Nobody else has anything that looks even remotely similar to this and it's a great design. Now I think the top ones up here are actually just cosmetic. They don't light up and they do move with the tailgate. Speaking of, the tailgate is automatic. Just press the button and it will open. But look at the size of this thing. This isn't a tailgate or boot lid. This is a garage door. And now in most cars, I would climb into the boot. In this, I climb onto the boot. Now, as you might expect, because there are three rows in this car, the boot isn't all that big, but I still have plenty of space. And if I wanted to, I can always lower the rear seats. Overall, in terms of the exterior, I don't know what Hyundai have been smoking, but please give me some. I really want some because I think they've really hit it out of the ballpark with this new retro futuristic kind of design philosophy because it's just given a new and completely unique feel to the whole brand. Right, now on to the inside of the car. Welcome to my crib. You wanna come in? Open up my house door and climb in. So I'm gonna start with the third row and just look how easy it is to walk back here. And then once I am back here, just look at how much space I have. I am 1.8 meters tall. These seats are not really pushed forwards. So they're in normal seating positions and just Look at how much room for activities I have back here. It's insane. The third row in this car has more space than most other cars do in the second row. It's just wild to think of. And if you look at it from my perspective, it's also just crazy to, to see how far away the front of the car is. And unlike most other seven-seaters, getting told to sit back here is hardly a punishment because check this out, I've got USB ports, I've got cup holders, a little storage space, ambient lighting. I've got air vents and look at this. If I wanted to, I can even open up the windows like an old timey bus to get a bit more fresh air in. Now we move on to the second row, which is where all of the fun is in this car. If I wanted to close my door, just press a button and the door automatically slides closed. And now these center seats are by far the best seats in the house for two very simple reasons. The first is that it's both heated and most importantly cooled. And the second is this. 
all I have to do is press and hold this button and the chair goes into full dentist chair mode. But wait, there's more. Once you're here, use this little thing and the leg rest comes up. I am literally in a business class seat in a car. Or if I wanted to, I can lower the shades, close the moonroof, and I am in the world's most expensive nap pod. Now, when I'm not napping and I want to keep myself entertained, I have things like cup holders, USB ports, a drawer. I have my air vent, climate controls, and I even have a window that opens sideways. Hello! You join me now in the front seats of the Hyundai Staria. Now you might be thinking that, oh no, the front seats, they're not as comfortable as the second row. Well, I mean, yeah, they don't fully recline back. It'd be hard to drive, you know, like that. But they're still pretty comfortable. They're fully leather, fully electric, and they are heated. And again, most importantly, cooled. And other than that, I get the usual kind of gizmos and gadgets that Hyundai gives you. So I have my fully digital gauge cluster in front of me. I have the main screen in the center for my infotainment system, as well as wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Now below that, I have my climate controls and some of the car functions, then the wireless charging pad for my phone, and 12 volt socket and a couple more USB ports down there. Now you might be thinking that in a car as big as this and with how much space there is back there, the front seats have actually the least space of all. But no, you'd be wrong because I think this car has the most internal storage space in any car I've ever seen. Are you ready? We start with the door. Up front, we have this little slot up here to put coins or some other things. This door handle, door card, has some space. Below that, there's another door card with a little bit more storage space. Below that, we have the door bin, which can fit my comically large water bottle with no issue. That's just the door. Moving on to here, we have a glove box in front of the gauge cluster. And next to that, we have another glove box. And below that, we have the actual glove box, which isn't all that big actually. But that's okay because over here, we have a shelf above the USB ports. We have another storage shelf below the USB ports. Across from that, there's another storage cubby to put more things. And then in the middle, we have your cup holders another really deep storage space with what I like to call because this thing goes all the way underneath here and this is what I like to call the contraband space. So I think as you've all seen, Staria is frankly ridiculous in terms of how much space it has inside to put people and for you to put your things. And I can only imagine the comfort I would be in to be driven or to drive this all the way up to KL, Genting or even further. And although the seats behind are the ones you really want to be in, I'm in the driver's seat and it's my job to show you how it drives. So let's go. Here are the headline figures of the Hyundai Staria. The Staria is powered by a three and a half liter V6 making 268 horsepower and 331 newton meters of torque. Power is sent to the front wheels through an eight-speed automatic gearbox and it will do zero to 100 in 8.9 seconds and onto a top speed of 210 km per hour. Fuel economy is quoted by Hyundai at 9 kilometers per liter. So first things first, I honestly feel like I'm driving a bus or a van more than I am driving a car. Even on the seat's lowest setting, you sit really high up. So you do feel like you're towering over most of the other motorists on the road. Now, obviously because of this vehicle size, it can actually be quite intimidating to drive if you're not that confident, especially when it comes to parking. Because of its girth, the Staria takes up pretty much the entire width of a normal parking lot. But it's okay because there is a 360 degree camera to help with that. And when you're on the road to help you with uh, some of your visibility issues, you do get when you signal, like now, you do get uh, a little camera that comes up in your gauge cluster that shows you video feeds from your blind spots so that's a very big help in terms of visibility there's a lot of glass in this car and while the rear windows do have their privacy shades the size of this 
driver's side window and passenger side window and this uh, front windscreen does make the car feel a bit fish tanky. And uh, although this car actually has pretty decent turning radius for its size, because of its size, still sharper turns and U-turns might still be a, a little bit of a headache. So performance-wise, although this does have a 3.5-litre V6 engine, just forget about anything sporty. This car is not made for that. It weighs 2.2 tonnes and you can feel it, especially because you feel like you're sitting over the front wheel, so everything feels a bit lurchy. Now, as for what this car is made for, on the other hand, I want to introduce to you a new term and this is the term I like to use to describe the class of cars that this belongs to and that term is called Taoke class. Now other cars in this class to give you an idea include the cousin to this, the Kia Carnival as well as the incumbents, the Alphard and the Velfire. These cars are meant for you to be either driven in or for you to drive your entire kampong around in exceptional comfort and considering how throughout this whole drive all I've been thinking about is how much I want to be back there instead. I say the Staria fits the bill perfectly. As someone whose family has a preference for MPVs and has owned multiple, I could only hope and wish and pray that this was the one they came home with. Other than that, in this Tauke class, there are multiple options, but if for no reason other than the way this thing looks, the Staria outshines all of them. And once you add in the Noah's Ark level of interior space, all I can say is I only have eyes for the Staria. And as always, thank you very much for watching this episode of M Review. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Home, Jeeves. Motorist.